and our farm, we harvest about 1,500 pounds of fresh herbs from about two and a half acres. And in order to do this kind of intensive farming, we have to be constantly nourishing the soil. Compost is one of the key things to nourish soil, to be giving back nitrogen and carbon and all kinds of various nutrients. I build compost like right in the center of everything here because <laughs> I always feel like compost should never be forgotten. <laughs> it should be right front and center. So I built it exactly a month ago and it was about this tall. And what I'm looking for, and I'm really grateful that it's working, is for within, a, within the first month you want to see your pile dropping because it means that the compost process is really, really happening. This is made with, um, with certified organic cow manure. And we always say that animal manure is a living source of nitrogen. Chemical fertilizers is a non-living source of nitrogen. And to really nourish the soil, you want to be nourishing the soil with a living source of nitrogen. We cut down a lot of nettles and a lot of comfrey leaves and have a lot of organic straw. My neighbor with his bucket loader, he's bucketing the cow manure and we are throwing in leaves and fresh comfrey and fresh nettles and lots of straw. This is our carbon source and then we're, it's just getting all mixed in in layers as we first build it. And I will prep the pile with the biodynamic compost preparations. And the compost preparations are six different herbs that are made in very specific ways that we add into the pile after about five or six, seven days after the pile has dropped in temperature. And I'll let it go for another month and then I'll flip it a, a second time. So ideally, with the proper proportion of carbon and nitrogen, that the pile will heat up to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So this has just been in one month that it's already breaking down like this. As I get in here, it's, it's definitely much, much warmer. If it gets too hot, there's a little bit of what we call ashing going on. I'm gonna get my thermometer Yeah, it's hot. So I'm going to get my neighbor to come with his tractor as soon as I can. And we'll flip the pile. And I may even put a little tiny bit of water as we're flipping the pile. Because I don't want it to be too hot. If it gets too hot, you begin to, to lose some of the beneficial nutrients that you want to have in your piles. But let's look at um, some older compost that we're using right now. It's really beautiful, this compost. There's lots of little sticks and herb, herb stalks, but it's broken down and it smells like really, really good soil. But to me, I, I'm just, it's friable, it's crumbly. There's a little bit of moisture in here. It smells like deep, earthy soil. I'll make another pile of compost in the, um, in the fall. And, and then all through the winter, any compost that's, being, that's in the process of composting or that's been done, I cover it with this blanket to, so that I don't lose nitrogen to the air and also that it doesn't get too watered down if we were to get rain and things like that. In the fall, when we clean out all of our garden beds from the annual crops, we will apply this compost. And I, I, I put, I don't know, a layer of maybe two inches of compost on the top. And then I just, with a very simple, like a hand hoe or just a very simple hoe, I just barely mix it in. There are also large farms doing really, really good work. Um, some people will use a spader, which is a, which is a tool that just, it barely begins to, I mean, it'll break the surface of the soil, but it doesn't do the same kind of damage as a rototiller does. If you want to support the life in soil, 
you really need to be very, very careful at how much you disturb the mycelium and you know all the mycorrhizal fungi and all the other microorganisms that are in the soil. It's not just structure. It's also, there's these incredible microscopic life in the soil that supports the life of the soil. And then I cover all of our beds with straw. I never leave the bare beds. Everything here either gets cover cropped or gets straw as a mulch. What does it mean to use compost to nourish soil, to help the soil be more receptive to these larger forces that are happening on the earth, but we can't necessarily always scientifically prove, but we can notice what's happening in our gardens and our fields just by being really good observers of the quality of the plants that we're growing, of what the soil feels like and looks like and smells. Those are things that I really am always watching in the gardens um, to be able to have a sense about how are these plants doing? I can tell if something's not doing well and if they're not doing well then I'm going to really pay attention to what's happening here.